I'm delighted to now invite Rajan Navani. He's a founding board member of India Spura. I'm not going to read out his credentials because I'll eat into your time, Rajan. Is, but I'm going to say a few things. He's a chairman and managing director of uh, Jetline Group. He's a national president of the Indian Digital Gaming Society, chairman of the CIS National Council on India at 75. He's a founding chairman of CIS Future Council, Business Council. He's in the India-Japan Business Leaders Forum. And there are several others. I'm not going to go into details, but Rajan, over to you now. Well, a very good morning. and. Thank you, everyone. I think uh, while everyone is settling down and moving forward, I know we have a coffee break coming up, so I'm going to keep this brief, but I'm going to continue to talk a little bit about the stories that have been the discussion for the morning. You know, we covered son and great-grandson, and I cover the grandson piece because my grandfather was the one who left the shores of India in the 1930s and went to Thailand. And I had the fortune and the opportunity to come back to India at a very young age and therefore spent most of my life in India because my folks wanted to raise us in an Indian upbringing. And I think that's where this story begins. But, you know, the story with MR and in diaspora also began as a sentiment of being a part of the diaspora. And when we were at MR's home over a decade ago, we conceived in diaspora and I said, we have to figure a way to be able to engage this meaningful audience with India. While the diaspora in the US had done a lot within the US, I think there was this big bridge that needed to be filled and strengthened. But I'm gonna talk a little bit today about, you know, India at 75. It's a historic year as we all see, you know, for the G20 and we see India having the presidency. But it's also the culmination of 75 years of Indian independence. Uh, Prime Minister Modi has celebrated this as the Amrut Mahotsav. Of course, a country that has had a large history and a much longer uh, cultural generational shift. But, you know, what we are really talking about is an episode that came up in New York, you know, back in 2007 when India was celebrating India at 60. And it was a time when we had completed 60 years of independence. And one of the diaspora members who was the world's foremost thinker at that time. Actually, he was number one in 2007, was Professor C.K. Prahlad from the Ross Business School. And C.K. came up to the podium and said, why are we talking about what India has achieved in 60 years? Let's talk about what we can in the next 15. And the first time the word India at 75 was coined, you know, I think was inspired by that statement of C.K. And, you know, in his typical management style, he went into why India can turbocharge and accelerate the change that happened, you know, from 1992 to 2007, you know, economic liberalization, but can we accelerate and make the India of 2030 relevant in 2022? And I think what followed from there on was a very concerted agenda to see how we can build a vision for what India could achieve in 15 years. And today, when we stand here in, you know, at the culmination of the Amrut Mahotsav, because of the pandemic, it was celebrated for two years uh, in India. And just 15th August, we completed technically the celebrations of India at 75. You know, one can see what this journey has led to, right? This G20 presidency is a defining moment in that journey. And I must say that this was one agenda that worked across different governments. You know, while this started back with the Manmohan Singh government as a prime minister, but during an interaction at that time with Prime Minister Modi, uh, we, a two and a half hour discussion with CK around the future of India was, was, was actually a key defining moment. And I still remember that conversation. It was CK, Prime Minister, I mean, that time Chief Minister Modi and myself, you know, Pri Modi ji speaking in Hindi, CK speaking in English and I'm trying to translate between these two great minds about what the future of India could be in 15 years. And that there are many anecdotes from that conversation. And you know, since it has been an anecdotal thing, I will share one piece. You know, when, when I think CK was talking that India should get you know, 10 Nobel Prize winners, you know, Prime, Prime Minister Modi at that time said, right? and CK said, no, it's just about creating intellectual stimulation and doing a lot of that. You know, it's, we had C.V. Raman, we've had all of that. And, and he said, nahi, main abhi tak nahi So CK was getting a little agitated. 
and you know, and I, that's when. So you know, I asked him what, but what do you, what is it? So he said, "Main bol raha hu ki humko aisi aisa award we should have that the world comes to get it from us rather than we are going to chase." And that's when CK said, "That is India at 100, right?" I mean, he said it will take us that much more time to be able to achieve that, but that's the aspiration or the sentiment of a journey for India at 75. And of course, that conversation ended with. Prime Minister Modi then saying Delhi and Gato Karenge and nobody understood it that time. But if you go and see the day he got elected, the next day he did talk about India at 75. But I think this is not a story really only about India at 75, but it is about the aspiration moving to self-confidence. How India at 75 has now embarked on a journey for India at 100. What does this really mean, you know, in the diasporics concept and in that context? Because today, as we Talk about the Amrit Kal. We really talk about this golden period of India, and as I've been interacting with many people, there are a few themes that come out very, very clearly. I think how can India become an Vishwa Guru, right? What what does that original ethos of India mean to the world? I still remember in an interaction, and we've had a ground up visioning exercise for India at 100, and a lot of those uh, will be released, you know, because the CII Confederation of Indian Industry and others have. Put a large part of that together. A large part was in an interaction with a director of IIT Kanpur. He said, "You know, like the gold rush, I had a dream that people from San Francisco are saying, 'Where is Kanpur? Where is Kanpur? There is something for us to go and get from there, right? Because the technology, the next brilliant thing that is going to happen and shape the world, is actually happening out of India, right? I think there are so many such narratives and stories that build, but at the end of the day, it came down to being a super partner." I think India will unleash its its superpower position or whatever by 2047 is how India partners with the world, and that's in where I think the role of the diaspora, which has actually meaningfully gone into so many different countries, partnered, integrated, become part of the society and shape those countries, right? I think that aspect of the diaspora, I think if that can percolate back into India, that can be. you know it's an energy that can get enhanced and shared and i think over the next year mr and arun uh, a board member shekhar who was another founding board member we were just discussing this morning how are we going to really think about shaping india's poras agenda over the next year to be able to be reflective of what we can achieve in the next 25 years as a diaspora so i think we talked about you know many many different aspects and there are still so many areas of the diaspora that have not been represented baljinder here reminded me that the whole african 4 million diaspora has not been talked about and i think there is so much that india has you know got to be able to unleash over this period and it's an opportune moment it's a it's a crazy time in the history of mankind because i don't think ever a country of 1.4 billion people democratically elected has moved from being a developing country to a developed country prime minister modi calls it viksit bharat and i think that's the opportunity you know that exists you know for us today so as atul rightly mentioned we can keep thinking about the past and you know keep engaged there or we can worry about <laughs> what the future will be but i think the time is now and i think we need to accept that and we need to be able to take the right steps to be able to unlock this super opportune time i think in history that we are all sitting here and use this today as a historic moment as i said reflect back maybe 25 years later you know on what this event meant uh, to the role of the diaspora in shaping the future of india at 100 thank you thank you very much